Brothers and sisters, the, the word of God, <clears throat> throughout the time that that I remember being instructed about the Eucharist, I remember <clears throat> a lot of things being said to me, but what I remember most about the Eucharist, most about the Eucharist, especially as a young boy, <clears throat> and maybe because that was a doubt in my mind was that when I take the Eucharist, <clears throat> I must wet the top of my palate so that it doesn't get stuck, so that I can eat it and swallow it. As a young boy, that's all I remember about being trained about the Eucharist. And then, <clears throat> as the years went by, we'd go for Mass, but M Mass would always be a, uh, a tug of war between my mind and the world tour that my mind wanted to take throughout Mass. Always, always. So, <clears throat> imagine my shock when I attended a retreat and maybe many people had told me about this already but the priest there was telling a story about his life when he was young and he said, my mother took me to adoration once and this priest has a, has a special accent so I'll, I'll never forget what he said. <clears throat> and he said, my mother pointed at the, at, at the blessed sacrament and my mother said, that is Jesus. And I remember thinking to myself at that retreat, I said, where was I? Uh, I was maybe 18 or 19 when I attended this retreat. And I said, where was I for 18 and 19 years? Why didn't I recognize Jesus? Why was that just a piece of bread for me? Why is it that time after time, I went for daily mass, I served at the altar, and I continue to go for daily mass. And throughout that time, I never seem to have uh, an experience of God in the Eucharist. No? So, <clears throat> my first retreat got over. I had an experience of God, but, but really not an experience of Jesus in the Eucharist. Around that time, my mother had attended... My mother's not here, no? She's not here today. No, very good. So, I always check, it's better to check. <clears throat> so, around that time, my mother uh, had some very deep experiences of God. No, do me a favor, don't ever tell her I told you this. Don't ask her, don't check with her. But, she, <laughs> she began to come home, you know, and, and she began to say, you know, today at Mass, I didn't see the priest. And I'd be like, oh, who did you see? I saw Jesus. I see. So, <clears throat> I'd be sitting in the hall. My father would be this side. My brother would be here. Be having my tea. I'd be thinking to myself, oh, here she goes again. <laughs> then next day she'd come. I didn't see the priest. I saw millions of crosses. I said, wow. Very good. Huh? I carry you, you're my cross and you see millions of crosses. Excellent. Then the third day she'd come. When father was lifting, I could only see the blood of Jesus. It went on, brothers and sisters, for months. My mother was just expressing what God was showing her. But I must admit at that point in time, I didn't know what she was talking about. Because I went for mass, I saw nothing. I went for mass, I experienced nothing. I, I knew that it was Jesus because the word said it was Jesus. But my experience uh, of the Eucharist was, I wouldn't say lacking, but, uh, but I, I didn't have that, that God experience that, that Jesus was in the Eucharist. But I believed because I had gone for a retreat, God had said something. And then suddenly, <clears throat> God started opening the word to me. So if you open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 onwards, those of you who don't have your Bibles, can look at yourself, say, Mia kulpa, shame on me. And while you do that, the word says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature that the Lord God had made. <clears throat> he said to the woman, Did God say, 
you shall not eat of any tree of the garden and the woman said to the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but god said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden and neither shall you touch it lest you die now brothers is until that time until that time <clears throat> the lord used to walk with adam and eve every evening yes or no is that what your bible says yes you're saying yes without knowing where it is no but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it'll come it'll come now <clears throat> at the beginning of this the word says now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature and the lord god that the lord god had made what to say the lord god had made these two words used together signifies a relationship when the word of god says lord which means adonai and god which means yahweh it means that not only is he your god but he is an intimate god so you will find that throughout the first and second chapter and even the first part of the third chapter of genesis the word of god uses these two words together it says lord god it doesn't say only god and so when the lord looks at your life when the lord created you it was not god who created you it was not god who created me it was the lord god who created you he was an intimate god that word lord can be used not by everybody it can be used only by someone who's your intimate with if you're intimate with god you can use that word lord otherwise you can't use it you're not allowed you're not allowed and the word of god is going to show us why if you continue to read it says then Asani, you will read uh, from read from verse one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature that the Lord God had made. That the Lord God had made. He said to the woman. He said to the woman. Did God say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? Now. And the woman. Yes. Said to the serpent. One second. Yeah. What does the word say? The serpent said, "Did God say? Does the serpent say, Lord God? No." which means the serpent acknowledged god but god was not lord yes or no yes or no brothers and sisters are you with me is it in your bibles does any bible say otherwise no if it does give me your bible now your bible will not say otherwise because what the serpent is see all this time it was the lord god walking with adam and eve it was the lord god they were allowed to call him lord they were allowed to be intimate with god that was that intimacy that they shared with god and suddenly the first thing the first thing that the serpent does is the serpent seeks to remove intimacy from the relationship and he says did god say did god say read on and the woman said to the serpent yeah we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden yeah but god said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden yeah neither now, now what did eve respond eve responded like this god said no all this time eve knew him as lord god but suddenly suddenly when the serpent says god she almost out of instinct responded as god and in that one moment brans and it's not adam did the same it's not only eve but we're talking about eve because she was the first point of contact for evil evil touched her first or rather tempted her first so goes to eve and eve responds and says god said read on but the serpent said to the woman yeah you will not die yeah for god knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil now now <clears throat> we know good and evil we we are born in this world we understand good and evil but god wanted us to understand when god showed us good and evil god wanted us to understand good and evil from his eyes 
So it was not God who wanted us to understand. It was the Lord God who wanted us to understand what is good and evil. If, if Eve wanted to know what was evil and good, she didn't have to go to God. She didn't have to eat of the tree. All she had to do was ask the Lord God who would come to meet her and her spouse later in the day and says, Lord God, what is evil? Lord God, what is the difference between good and evil? And so brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling us today. See, the Lord instituted the Eucharist because right at the beginning, the deepest form of intimacy between God and man was broken. God instituted the Eucharist for this purpose, that intimacy may remain. The intimacy that was lost with Adam and Eve. The intimacy that was lost because of disobedience, that was lost because they couldn't fully apply what God had given them to that situation, God wanted to give it back to us. And that is why, and so you'll find through um, uh, Genesis chapter 3, you'll find the Lord constantly being referred to as Lord God. Even when, uh, Sunny, you can read. Verse 22 onwards. Chapter 3, verse 22 onwards. Genesis 3, 22. <coughs> then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he has taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword which, which turned every way to, to guard the way of the tree of life. Now throughout, the only time that God is referred to as God is when Adam, Eve and evil speak about him. But otherwise, he's referred to as Lord God. Even when he's driving them out, he refers to himself as Lord God. So the Lord comes to us, brothers and sisters. And the Lord says, even in your sin, I desire intimacy. Even when you go away from me, I desire to you, I will always be Lord God. I will not be God. I refuse to be God. To you, I will be Lord God and only that. And the Lord God is the one who comes after us every single time. Every single time. And so the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the Eucharist was because the Lord God wanted to come back fully into our lives. Take wisdom chapter 16. Verses 20 to 28. Instead of these things, you gave your people the food of angels, and without their toil, you supplied them from heaven with bread ready to eat. Now, brothers and sisters, the word of God is talking about manna right now, okay? We must understand manna was the foreshadowing of what Jesus was to offer. Yes, read that again, Sonny. Instead of these things, you gave your people <clears throat> the food of angels, and without their toil, you supplied them from heaven with bread ready to eat. Yes. Providing every pleasure and suited to every taste. Yeah, now, now we must think about this, brothers and sisters. What is the word of God saying? The word of God is saying that he provided manna from heaven suited to every taste. Can you read it again? Provided? Providing every pleasure. Every, okay, providing every pleasure. And suited to every taste. And suited to every taste. Now, you must remember this. When the people went to Moses and they complained 
No, you know that they complained about manna, correct? Yes or no? Yes. Ah, why did they complain about manna? What did they say? Quickly, brothers and sisters, what did they say? No, they didn't say food come from heaven. They said something else. They complained because? They're tired of eating manna, correct? Why were they tired of eating manna? It was bland. Correct. It was not satisfying. They wanted to go back to the flesh pots of Egypt. But what is the word saying here? Read that again. Read that again. What is the word saying about manna? Providing. Yeah, it's going to be read, yeah. Providing every read. pleasure. Every pleasure. And suited to every taste. And suited to every taste. So in the morning, when you go to collect manna, and your children tell you, or your spouse tells you, listen, I want chicken today. You just had to cook the manna and it would taste like what? Chicken. Because the word is saying that. How many of you like mutton? I sound like Simon, no? Talking about chicken and mutton, but yeah. Mutton, mutton. Pork, pork, no? No takers for pork? No? Yeah? Little, little, put your hand a little high. Vegetarian? <laughs> yeah, there is some, no? Praise God, praise God. Paneer, paneer. Now suppose you, your, your husband came and said, hey, too much chicken, I want paneer. You collect manna and you cook and that's paneer. It tastes exactly like that. Read that again, sorry. Read that quickly, quickly. Read that again. <clears throat> Verse 20. 16, 20. Instead of these things. Providing every pleasure ah. and suited to every taste. Yeah, read on. Verse 21. For your sustenance. Yeah manifested your sweetness toward your children. Yes. And the bread ministering to the desire of the one who took it. Yeah, now listen to this. The bread ministering to what? The desire of the one who collected it. The bread ministered to the desire of the one who took it. If the one who took it desired to give non-veg that day, it would be non-veg. Desired to give veg, it would be veg. Whatever their desire was, God provided. Can you imagine how hurt God was when they said that the manna was bland? Can you imagine? God must have said, what more can I do? I send bread from heaven and after I send it, when you collect it, it suits your taste. It provides your every desire. It doesn't say it provides your every need. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. It doesn't say, I provide your every need. It says, I provide your every desire more than a need. If you want chicken one day, pork one day, beef one day, vegetarian one day, it will provide your every desire. What made them complain because of their addiction to sin not because the bread was not enough because of their addiction to sin the bread was more than enough it provided to their taste it provided for everybody you could collect as much as you want you could eat to your heart's fill nobody would have a problem you know why the problem was not in the taste of the food it was in the problem of the heart it was not the way that the food tasted because if the food catered to your desire. It was the problem of sin in the heart. And that is why they could not understand and they could not appreciate what God was doing in front of their eyes as a miracle every single day for 40 years. Not one day, not one week, 40 years. Read on, Sonny, read on. Snow and ice withstood fire without melting yeah so that they might know that the crops of their enemies were being destroyed by the fire that blazed in the hail and flashed in the, the showers, showers of, of rain. rain you know what it says it says when it snowed it would still remain to the collecting if hail would fall manna would still be there no matter if fire would come the manna would not disappear it would still be there and so God is saying, I gave them bread. No, God is looking at them and the, in the Old Testament with great love. And he's saying, I gave them bread that could not be destroyed with anything natural, with anything human. I gave them bread that was indestructible. Read on, read on. Whereas the fire, yeah. in order that the righteous might be fed. In order that the righteous might be fed. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you something. Were the Israelites righteous? 
quickly, quick to answer other questions. Were the Israelites righteous? Why? Uh, good, good. No is good. But why? Because? Ah, but righteousness is only because, it goes because of grumbling. Then why were they not righteous? Because they were sinful. Didn't follow God's commands. And? They didn't trust in God. Actually, the, 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 the core is trust. Correct. They didn't follow God's command. They was, but really, they didn't trust God. But God does something amazing. Out of his love for them, you know what he says? He calls them righteous. He says, I provide bread so that the righteous may eat. And did anyone go hungry? No. Everyone ate. So, God is looking at you and your life. God is looking at us. God is saying, I want to call you righteous. In the New Testament, we understand. That's why he sent his son. That's coming. But even in the Old Testament, he's saying, listen, you're my son. I, I saved you from Egypt. I saved you from sin. I'm calling you righteous. So that you may partake in the good things. Because if you're not righteous, you won't get manna. You won't get manna. And so therefore, I, because of my love for you, as a father, I'm calling you righteous so that you can receive the manna. So that it can cater to your every desire. Read on. Read on. For creation, yeah. serving you, yeah. who have made it, yeah. exerts itself to punish the unrighteous. Yeah. And in kindness, relaxes on behalf of those who trust <laughs> in you. You know what the word is saying? The word is saying, God knew that creation, his own creation, the wind, the storm, the hail, hunger, thirst, sickness, would punish the unrighteous. But these same things would relax in whose case? In the case of those who trusted in God. So God applied in advance that trust is in no Because my people left Israel, uh, Egypt and they came, they trust me despite their sin. Let nothing touch them. Let nothing touch them. Read on, read on. Therefore, at that time also, yeah. changed into all forms, it served your all nourishing bounty. Yeah. According to the desire of those who had need. Yeah. So that your sons, whom you loved, O yeah. Lord, yeah. might learn that it is not the production of crops yes. that feed man. Yes. But that your word preserves those who trust in you. Brothers and sisters, how are you and I preserved by the word? How you're not preserved because, see, we have, India is actually a farming nation. It looks like an IT nation the way we live in Bangalore. But actually, we're a nation of farmers. But God is saying, it is not the crops that sustain you. It's my word that sustains you. It's my, it's my word that sustains you. Will you read that again, Sonny? Will you read that again? So that your sons, whom you love the Lord. So that your sons and daughters... Whom you love, yes. Might learn. Might that, learn. That it is not the production of crops. That it is not the production of crops. It's not the provision of the land. That feeds man. Yes. But your word. But your word. That preserves those who trust in you. That preserves those who trust him. So now in the Old Testament, God knew that he had already taught them the most powerful lesson they would ever learn. That it is his word that preserves them. It was not the crops. It was not the strength of the army. It was not even their prayer. It was his word. But brothers and sisters. In order to make sure that we will never forget this lesson. That we will never forget this lesson. God ensured that that word became flesh. And dwelt amongst us. John 1.14 onwards. <clears throat> that that word. That he knew that it is my word. It is God's word. As the father he knew my word sustains my people. And my people are prone to forget. My people are prone to rebellion. My people are prone to sin. My people are prone to blocking my grace in their life. And therefore. In order that they may have not a sign. But a person in order that they may have not they may forget but let's say I write my word they may forget the Bible let's say I remind them through the church or through the synagogues they may forget that 
so that they will never forget that I am God with them. I am Emmanuel and it is my word that sustains them. I will ensure that the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. That is why, brothers and sisters, we have the Eucharist. That is why. See, I'm going to come to the news. What Jesus says is amazing. But we must remember, this is this foreshadows the Eucharist. And Jesus says, you know, we're going to read that. He says in John 6, verses 35 onwards, he speaks and he says, It's not Moses who gave your ancestors manna. It was my father. But I am the true bread that comes from heaven, he says. But before that, we must understand the foreshadowing of the nature of the Eucharist. Sonny, you'll have to read for me again from, um, from verse 20. Wisdom 16.20 Instead of these things In, Okay, so now listen, okay This is, remember the foreshadowing of the Eucharist And we must understand this because Tomorrow when we go for Mass We must understand that this is what God has done for me He's prepared a place for me he, He's prepared a hope for me he's, he's destroyed everything Every evil that earth has for me So that I can go and I can partake at Mass Read, yes, verse 20 Instead of these things, yes. you gave your people the food of angels. You gave your people the food of angels. Now Jesus is greater. The, 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 the Eucharist is greater than the food of angels. Okay. You gave your people the food of angels. And without they toil, you supplied them from heaven with bread ready to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, God, what is God saying? When you go for mass, when you go for mass, the bread is already ready to eat. It's ready. You have to do nothing. Your confession, I, I confess to Almighty God, is something that God requires of you so that you can have open access to His body and blood. But it's ready. Jesus is waiting for you. And you've kept Him waiting 10, 20, 30, 40, 80 years of your life, my life. Brothers, I, 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 I want to tell you this. You know, when I went for my retreat, I, I told you last week, but I'm telling you again. You know, I, I, I had an experience, God gave me some experiences. I had an experience uh, of, of, of Jesus waiting for me. I said, Lord, I, I see you, you know, <laughs> at mass every day and I see you. But the Lord is saying, the Lord told me, you haven't given of yourself fully. And until you give of yourself fully, I have to wait. I can't take part of you. I remember, brothers and sisters, I, I was weeping in repentance is not because I was sorry because you know God made me understand what it is to wait for someone you love what it is to wait for unrequited love we have not given God back the love that he deserves we'll never be able to do it unless God enables it and that time at my retreat I, I continued like God gave me understanding of how much I've made him wait how much I've made him wait if tomorrow someone told you, you know, I, I'm being really serious. If someone said, listen, you know, you go to church once a day, you'll be healed. You go to church twice a day, your financial problems will get taken care of. You go to church thrice a day, your children will get taken care of. Go to church four times a day, they'll make you a nun. I'm just saying. If they said that, wouldn't you go? Wouldn't you just leave your job and say, forget it, man. If I go to church once, everything will get taken care of. Once it will get taken care of. Twice, even better. Thrice, even better. I'll leave my job. I'll be in church. I'll be in church. In the natural, that is what God is, that is what people will tell you. But supernaturally, God offers that to us. Through his son. Through the Eucharist. God offers that to you. Are you going for mass every day? I'm not condemning you, brothers and sisters. What do you have to condemn you? I'm just asking you, what are you doing? Where are you lacking? Are you not lacking because you don't know the word of God says no? Do you, are you not in error because you know neither the, the power of God nor the scripture? Are you not in error? If you really went to mass and you knew that that is the eternal father, you'd go for two masses a day, three masses a day. You wouldn't sleep before you go to mass the next morning instead of complaining my back is paining, head is paining, leg is paining, can't go, got fever, nothing. You would have gone with everything. So once I go, we'll see. 
my first experience of the eucharist that i remember of healing in the eucharist my personal experience is when you know as a young boy when i just came to the lord i had no experience they said you know right here somebody said go to sister disciples i said what is sister disciples <laughs> said it's, uh, it's where the eucharist is so because a lot of the youth when when i had joined the lord i were going i went and my first experience is i went i saw this house it had a lotus i said oh lotus and i turned around and i went back home you know for some reason i didn't see the cross on the lotus i said who is house is this I don't know man there's one lotus there the next time i next thursday i met some of these young guys i said hey what you said you could is a lotus man some hindu person's house i mean i love my hindu brothers and sisters but i'm just saying you know i didn't expect going there to see to see the eucharist there he said no 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 there's a cross on, on the lotus <laughs> go inside leave your shoes outside and go in so the next time I, i said let me try this time if i encounter some hindu sister saying where have you come i'll never go back but right enough that place was open i went i remember this one time i <clears throat> i went in with fever and cold and i went and i said i'll, I'll just stay for 10 minutes because you know i don't want everyone to get fever and cold and you know francis i stayed for an hour i came out i went home i, I had a tvs at that time i'm going in the tvs no helmet rule no problem st mark's road was a two way you could ride any way you want i'm going home and i realized that you know but because while going there i had to take out the hanky in the middle ride with one hand one hand on my nose this time nothing check my nose i dug my nose to check and see where's the cold gone i didn't feel fever no it was i was healed i was healed and, and god progressively in my family continued to heal us brothers and sisters you haven't toiled for the power of the eucharist you haven't fasted and prayed waited on your knees for the lord the lord is saying i've prepared myself for you i've prepared myself for you but please i'm sorry please please don't feel bad but you're a hypocrite you're a hypocrite even if you go for mass every day you're a hypocrite you know why because you haven't given yourself fully to christ don't feel bad i'm not condemning you i say this with love you're my brother and sister you haven't given yourself to god if you had at the mass your fight would be done if you had your greatest battle would be won your victory would be won because jesus is before you nothing can stand against him but no no you still go back from the mass with your problem you know why you haven't given it fully to god and with the problem you haven't given yourself fully to god read on sunny read on providing <clears throat> every pleasure providing every pleasure and suited to every taste god is saying listen i'm giving myself to you providing your every taste through the eucharist god is saying i'm providing your every taste what do you want what do you want how long have you struggled look to the eucharist say lord what lord you're not answering i want this i need this my father's dying valid valid how long have you done this to the lord without realizing that when that time comes for you to consume the eucharist he provides for your every taste he provides for your every desire he provides for your every need he breaks every bondage in that one lord i am not worthy to end, that you enter under my roof but only say the word and i will be healed and the last part of this scripture says so that they may know that it is not by crops that you are sustained but by his word only say the word i am healed my soul shall be healed read on read on for your sustenance for your sustenance manifested your sweetness toward your children what does this mean this means god is saying his sustenance his desire to sustain his children us manifested in its sweetness which means that nothing bitter is given to us the eucharist is not bitter it's not bitter to taste it's not bitter when it goes inside your soul it becomes bitter only if you stubbornly hold on you and i stubbornly hold on to sin then it becomes bitter otherwise it's god's sweetness the bread of angels and so much more his son himself read on and the bread ministering to the yeah. desire of the one who took it i like this word that that the bible uses the bread ministering which means that it caters to at every level it caters to your mind 
it caters to your emotions it caters to your will it caters to your needs it caters to any bondages you may have it caters to your children it caters to everything it ministers unto you you know the word ministering was used for people who ministered unto god which means they stood in front of god they worshiped god and say lord we will worship you we will minister unto you the word is saying that the eucharist ministers unto you that is what god has done for you that is what that is how humble that is how uh, that is where god has come so that you can partake of him read on read on was changed to suit everyone's liking yeah snow and ice which stood fire without melting so that they might know that the crops of their enemies were being destroyed by the fire that blazed in the hail yeah. and flashed in the showers of rain yeah whereas the fire in order that the righteous might be fed even forgot its native power yeah so the word is saying the fire forgot its native power the, the native power of fire is to destroy but when it came to man or when it comes to the eucharist the fires of hell can never touch you it can never touch you never you, you you become untouchable when you receive the eucharist you become invincible when you receive the eucharist because the word is saying that read on sunny read on from verse 24 onwards read on for creation serving you who have made it yeah exerts itself to punish the unrighteous yeah and in kindness relaxes on behalf of those who trust in you yes therefore at that time also changed <clears throat> into all forms at that time right i i love this part it says therefore at that time changed into all forms which means whatever you need of the lord the lord is going to become that it served your all nourishing bounty yeah according to the desire of those who had need yes so that your sons whom you loved o lord might learn that it is not the production of crops that feeds man but your word preserves those who trust in you yeah for what was not destroyed by fire was melted when simply warmed by a fleeting ray of the sun yes to make it known that one must rise before the sun to give you thanks and must pray to you at the at the dawning of the light yes thank you uh sunny um, um john chapter 6 verses 35 onwards what the word is saying is that manna that was so strong could not be disturbed by fire could not be disturbed by hail could not be disturbed by anything natural the moment the sun's rays would touch it it would just melt and disintegrate because god wanted to show us that if you have to collect manna if you have to receive from god you have to get up before dawn before dawn so that so that you can receive the fullness of god have you ever wondered why mass is so early in the morning not early but 5:30 6 6:30 so that you can get up before dawn and partake of the lord no problem if you go for 10 o'clock mass 11 o'clock mass evening mass but i'm just saying this is the word speaking it is the word speaking read john 30 was 32 onwards yeah yeah jesus then said to them yeah truly truly i say to you yeah it was not moses who gave you the bread from heaven it was not moses who gave you the bread from heaven my father gives you the true bread from heaven yeah for the bread of god is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world they said to him lord give us this bread always and jesus said to them i am the bread of life he who comes to me shall not hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst yeah brothers and sisters if jesus says if jesus said he who comes to me shall not hunger he who believes in me shall never thirst then why did jesus on the cross say i thirst quickly quickly i know you know the answer If Jesus said he who comes to me will never hunger he who believes in me will never thirst why did he say i thirst on the cross huh no he was crucified why did he say i thirst which souls the ones who did not come to him 
Because if you came to him, you would never be hungry. You would never be thirsty. If you came to him, you would never be hungry. He wouldn't have, have needed to say, I thirst. He said, I thirst because of the ones, the millions before him and after him who didn't come to him. In fact, at the time that he died, except his mother, I think nobody really fully came to him. And God is looking at you today and God is saying, if you hunger, you know this. See, I say this with love and I'm going to end, it's, it's, uh, end with this. I say this with love, you know there are hungers in your life. You know you're thirsty for whatever it is. Maybe thirsty for justice, maybe thirsty for food, uh, hungry for food. Maybe uh, hungry and thirsty for some, something that you don't have in your life. Uh, some, some need that you need, some healing, a house, uh, um, I don't know, marriage, whatever. They're genuine. They're genuine. But it also means that you and I haven't gone to God. It means that you go to mass and not intentionally, but you and I have made a mockery of, of that eternal God that is there. You have very clearly made a mockery. Maybe not, in, I'm not saying you've done it intentionally. But if you have hungers and thirsts, it's because you haven't gone to Jesus. Because, read that, third, I am the bread of life. Jesus said to them. Jesus said to them. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He doesn't say I was. He doesn't say I will be. I. It's an authority. It's God stamping his authority over our lives, over the earth, over every creation. He's taking it back from the devil. Taking the authority that was given to the devil by Adam. He says I am the bread of life. I am the one who will save you. I am the son of God. Read on. He who comes to me, he shall, who comes to me, shall not hunger. Shall not hunger. And he who believes, and in he me, who believes in me, shall never thirst. I, I, I would have expected Jesus shall not thirst. He says he uses this word, never thirst, never thirst. Read on, read on, sorry. But I said to you, yeah, that you have seen me, <coughs> and yet you do not believe. Yeah. So, so Jesus is looking at them. He's saying. I told you I'm the bread of life. I told you. And you're looking at me. You're seeing me. And you don't believe. How many times have we done that in mass? We're seeing him. We're looking at him. And we don't believe. And then read on. All that the father gives me. Yeah. Will come to me. Yeah. And him who comes to me. I will not cast out. Correct. For I have come down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of whom he who sent will me. of him who sent me. Yeah. And this is the will of him who sent me. Yeah. That I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up at On the, the last, last day. day. Brothers and sisters, the word I've come to an end of this time, we'll continue maybe next week. But I want to tell you this. The Lord Jesus wants to reignite that intimacy that Adam and Eve had and more, more. So Adam and Eve definitely was God with them but this is God with us and God in us. And every time you and I decide to go for mass, see, there are many ways of preparing for mass, yes. There is a different talk on that, how do I prepare for mass but that's not even the point. The point is, are you willing to go every morning or every day or as often as uh, your state of life will allow you? Are you willing to go into the presence of God and say, Lord, I believe you are the bread of life. I believe that once I receive you, my every desire, my every need, maybe I have a financial problem, maybe I have a spiritual problem, maybe I have a, uh, an emotional problem, maybe I have a problem with my, with my family, a problem with my children, a problem with my past, a problem with my present, future, whatever. Do you believe that once I receive him, my every desire, my every need is taken care of? Because that's what the word says. The word says that. And brothers and sisters, another thing the word says, see, when the father, uh, the father and the son came, the son was uh, not well, he had a, an evil spirit troubling him. And the father had faith for the son. So the father said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And the Lord said, he's healed. 
So when you and I go to the Eucharist and you pray for a loved one, no, you pray for a loved one with whatever faith you have, your, your, your prayer is answered. Your prayer, you pray for an enemy with whatever love you have, your prayer is answered. 100%. The problem is God, many times, God seeks to give you something greater. See, when, when, when these people came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, they said, you know, uh, yeah, God gave, it was not Moses who gave you manna from heaven, it was my father who gave you the bread from heaven. I am the true bread from heaven and they said, Lord, uh, you know, and I am the bread from heaven, you know, I am the one who is given to you always the true bread from heaven and they said, Lord, give us this bread. He already said, I am the bread. And they are saying, Lord, give us this bread. So when you and I go for mass, uh, go to receive the Eucharist, brothers and sisters. You know, there's a part of the church that the, I believe, we don't say it anymore, but it's there. It's, it's called the church triumphant. The church triumphant is the connection between the church in heaven and the church on earth, between the saints and, 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 and the martyrs and everybody who believes in the Lord has gone before us and the ones who believe in him here, in Jesus here. When you go to church, go as the church triumphant. Don't go defeated. That is not of the Lord. See, there may be times, I know, when, when, when life gets the better of you, when, when you're not able to understand, when, when things get the better of you, but as you're going for Mass today, tomorrow, whenever it is, go to the Lord. And say, Lord, I, I believe that you will cater to my every desire. I believe that your body will minister to me. Actually, it should be the other way around. We should be ministering unto God, but the Lord does not wait for us. The Lord ministers unto us. And that when he ministers to us, nothing on earth can destroy it. No hail, no storm, nothing that anything that the world has against us will be destroyed. It cannot destroy. God waits for you this morning, this evening, tomorrow morning rather, as you go for mass. Let's just close our eyes as we come to an end of this time. Father in heaven, I want to thank you and praise you. <clears throat> for this time, Lord, I... I want to humbly say sorry, Lord, for the times that we've taken you for granted, for the time that you used other, other excuses not to go for Mass, not to receive you. But today, Lord, I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for waiting for me, Lord. I want to thank you for for ministering unto me even if I didn't realize it today Lord I, I willingly open my heart unto you Lord so that you can minister to me and I can become fully like you in Jesus mighty and matchless name we pray Amen Amen Amen